Oh, hello there. I was just catching up on a bit of reading. I'm just reading uh, Rovering to Success, the revised edition by Lord Baden-Powell. I'm just reading what he's saying about smoking. Uh, he's talking about lighting a pipe because, of course, and I quote, I have no opinion of cigarettes. They are what women and little boys smoke, which is a, a, an outrageous uh, kind of sentiment. Uh, harking, of course, from a bygone age when uh, people could just feel free to speak their minds, unless, of course, they were uh, women or children. Um, okay, so this week we've got um, we've got a couple of fruit beers. Now, last week we had uh, two cherry beers from uh, Leifman's and Van Hansebroek, based on the the Flemish brown ale. Now, what we've got this week are two uh, two lambic fruit beers. Now, lambic beers are uh, are fairly unusual. They're they're brews that are brewed with uh, malt and wheat, and they use a certain amount of hops, but they use aged hops, so the hop character in it is very, very much reduced. There isn't much hop bitterness. Um, but instead of using a cultured yeast, what makes these beers ferment is is wild yeast from the from the environment that the beers are brewed in, in inside the brewery. Um, traditionally, lambic beers come from the uh, from the town of Lembic, uh, which is on the River Zen in Belgium. Um, and when the, when the brewer brews the wort, the lovely fermentable sugars there, uh, he throws open shutters in his brewery or, or wild yeast will settle from the environment coming in from outside the brewery or, or from cobwebs and dust inside the brewery already and it, it causes a, a natural fermentation. Now this, this fermentation is, is slightly wild, the, 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 the complexity of the yeast is such that it can be a little bit unpredictable but what you tend to get are beers that ferment to low strengths around four or five percent um, and have very kind of wild again that that Britannomyces horse blankety um, aroma now what we've got we've got two examples one from each end of the spectrum now the, the quote from Baden Powell at the start was kind of a reference to these very light commercial fruit beers you know, being being uh, being for women and children. Um, that's not necessarily something that you know I espouse. I think they're very nice, um, but some people think that that perhaps they're not really what men should be drinking. And the other thing we have here that I've already opened because it's a bit of a faff as a crown cap and a cork as well is a beer from uh, the Cantillon Brewery in in Brussels. So we have the two extremes here: Timmermans Creek, around four percent. Uh, it's a very, you know, it's a commercial beer. It's been sweetened. And then we have Cantillon, which produced produced beer exactly as beer was produced about a thousand years ago. Right, enough rabbiting. Let's get into it. So, we'll pop some Timmermans Creek in there, and then the Cantillon Creek. I have to say, I'm I'm a little bit anxious about trying that. Well, it's slightly slightly gloopy, glycerine-y texture to that one. Okay, the Timmermans first. Yeah, it's it, it got that really kind of medicinal, artificial cherry flavour that you get in a lot of kids' medicine. Mm. On the palate, it's sweet. It's a little bit medicinal. There's a little bit of complexity there. That, that kind of slightly horsey, horse blankety thing comes through at the end. But by and large, it's, it's fairly sweet, it's inoffensive, it's easy to drink, it's uncomplicated and you know, I, I quite enjoy it every now and again. And now the Cantillon beer, much wilder, like it has a real tartness to the nose of it. Mm. Oh. oh, my goodness, that's so tart, absolutely unsweetened. The only sweetness that comes in this is the sweetness from the cherries itself. Oh, I can barely keep talking, which some people might think that, you know, that's no such bad thing. But, um, let's have another go. Mmm. Oh! oh, oh. <laughs> that's fantastic. It's such a, it's such a shock to the system to have something so... There is a little initial p sweetness on the palate, but just the acidity. It's almost like having a lemon squeezed into your mouth. But you know, perversely, this is a beer that I've tried for, for a long time to try and enjoy. And I think this might be the beer that's actually done it for me. Um, I do like really kind of dry, sharp drinks, gin and tonic, dry sherry. This is just like, whoa! Mmm. 
that's fantastic. It's such an ancient style, really, really complex. No, no concessions to commerciality. This is a this is a brewer brewing beer that that you know he believes in, and it's it's a world you know it's a world famous classic. Um, I'm going to work through the rest of this glass. I don't think I'm going to be doing the rest of the bottle this evening. But thanks for dropping by, and we'll see you next time. Cheers.